As Season 9 approaches, a new cursed chest emissary flag, cashing points and more have been revealed. Alright, we have a ton to get through in this video that was released in the Season 9 Deep Dive today. However, before we do so, this video is sponsored by Nerd Propellant. Are you looking for amazing gifts for gamers, trying to find the perfect Sea of Thieves merchandise? Choose Nerd Propellant. Thousands of satisfied customers, props that bring games to life, decor for your game room. Amazing reviews. Light boxes to create awesome displays. Nerd Propellant. Use code GhostAdmiral for a 10% discount at checkout. Alright then, Nerd Propellant are an amazing company. If you've been in the Sea of Thieves community for any time at all, you must have heard of them. They're behind some of the most incredible props that you can get. The light box they sent me is of extremely high quality and it is amazing. Please do go check them out, links will be in the description. And don't forget to use code GhostAdmiral for 10% off at the checkout. Thank you so much for sponsoring and let's get on with Season 9. Let's kick things off with new information about the Fates of Fortune set. If you're wondering how it works and the exact values you'll need to get the set, it's 30. At least, that's what it is in Season 9. Confused? Well, effectively how it's going to work is you'll have to cash in 30 Chests of Fortune to get the figurehead, hull, and sails of the Fates of Fortune set. With the Reaper's Chest, it's 30 Reaper's Chests to get the Fates of Fortune weapons. However, when they start introducing the rest of the set, like the Capstan Cannons and Helm, they're going to increase this. So for now in Season 9, there's only Grade 1. There's only one grade to the Commendation. However, in the future, they're going to be increasing this for the corresponding rewards. Next up, the Chest of Fortune may well move world events, so it's not always going to stay at the Ford of Fortune season to season. In Season 9 it will be there, but it may well move, which is good, they're incentivizing doing other world events, not just Forts of Fortune. Now something interesting here, there was a comment made that Forts of Fortune aren't achievable for the majority of players, I found that pretty interesting so I put it in here. So, Ashen Lords are now rebalanced on the Fort of Fortunes, before they felt like a bullet sponge and their abilities weren't activating as often as they had liked. That's because it was balanced for 4 players. So if you're doing an Ashen Lord on a Fort of Fortune and you felt like it was really hard, that's because it was balanced for 4 of you, not 1, 2 or 3 of you, so nice change here Rare. Uh. A little bit of interesting information to note is that if you want to solo an Ashen Lord, it'll take around 10 minutes, which is a really nice size experience for solo. The three new voyages then, the special pirate legend voyages. You can buy them from either Athena's Fortune or in the Captaincy Shop, and these come in the form of Black Powder Voyages, Cursed Treasure Voyage, and the Search for the Skull of Destiny. Starting with the Black Powder Voyage, this allows you to stock up on Gunpowder, Firebombs, Stronghold Gunpowder Barrels, and you might even find an Athena Stronghold Gunpowder Barrel. The new Cursed Chest Voyage will allow you to go and find, well, Cursed Chests. Overall, what they're trying to do with this increase of loot is try and make more treasure on the seas, so there's more risk, so the world feels more alive. That's sort of what their goal with Season 9 has been, to enrich the sandbox. However, in this Cursed Chest Voyage, there is a brand new Cursed Chest. This is called the Chest of Boundless Sorrow, and it never stops crying. So we've now got four Cursed Chests that you can find in the world. The Chest of Sorrows, the Chest of Boundless Sorrow, the Chest of Rage, and the Chest of a Thousand Grogs. This I'm really looking forward to, because how many scenarios, how many times have you had a Chest of Sorrow on board, been fighting on a boat, and wanted to sink them in a really funny way, but that chest just wouldn't start crying. Well, now you have a chest that will permanently cry, just like the chest of everlasting sorrow that you can find in Sea of Thieves of Pirates Live, Tall Tale Number 2, The Sunken Pearl, if you unlock the little extra bit for the commendation. Finally, the search for the Skull of Destiny Voyage. When you place this voyage down, you'll be given an Athena Wayfinder Compass to go to an island and dig up the skull. It's that simple. From what I can gather from every source that has any information about the Skull of Destiny in it, how this functions is it doubles as a Ritual Skull, but it also has the lights in. 
so you still have to grab the lights from the skull with your lantern and light the fall of the damned, it doesn't insta-light it for you. Equally, you could therefore activate it with a separate ritual skull. This I really like because you might have a skull of destiny and five ritual skulls where you can just have the skull of destiny for the lights and you can put them on your boat or you can just keep it there in the Fall of the Damned and then use the other ritual skulls. I'm very glad that it functions like this. The next thing we already knew about from various developer tweets, but we now have footage of it, and that's that they've separated hit sting volume from the music slider in settings. If you don't know what hit stings are, they're essentially the music that plays when you hit, say, a ship or an Ashen Lord in its vulnerability state, and people wanted these separated into two different sliders because they wanted to turn the music down for whatever reason, but they still wanted to hear the stings loud and clear because it's obviously useful to hear if you're fighting at long range naval combat and you hit something so you know you've got the right track trajectory. The next thing is a huge change for Reapers, and that is that you can cash in all emissary flags at the Reaper representative at all outpost. It's literally by the emissary table, there's no new NPC, but you can cash in the Reaper flags to the skeleton in the cage. This is a very much welcomed change. A lot of people may not like it because it I guess it takes away the danger, but a lot of it is to do with the Battle for the Sea of Thieves and having a secure place to sell constantly and a nearby place to sell. Overall, a very good change. They have rebalanced outpost spawn rates. Gone are the days of constantly spawning at Daggertooth and Galleon's Grave, and I didn't even know that this was an issue until they highlighted it, but they have equally balanced where you can spawn in the world. And finally, this is something that we already knew again, but a lot of you may not have seen it considering it was on the live stream, and that's that you get bonus hunters call cool gold if you cash in at a sea post. It's a 50% bonus because you can now sell hunters call cool items at the Sovereign, so that's incentivizing you to go to a sea post instead. But with that said, that just about wraps up this video. Let me know what you think of all these changes down in the comments below. Are you happy with them, or do you disagree with them? Thank you again to Nerdprint for sponsoring. Please do go check them out, and don't forget the 10% discount code Ghost Admiral at the checkout. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, then please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news as and when it comes out. And while you're at it, why not hit the bell as well so you never miss a single upload. But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.